Welcome to Boots Buy. My name is William. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill. I'm going to talk about the leather quality, sole quality, fit and sizing, and ultimately whether or not this boot is right for you. Let's get into it. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. As I said today, we're reviewing the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill boot. This is, you know, Allen Edmonds, known for their dress shoes. They're stepping into rugged boots. And this one, as you can see, is pretty much unworn. I've worn it around the house for sure, but I'm wondering whether or not I should keep it or if I should return it um, because I already have a boot that's pretty similar. So I'm gonna talk about how this Allen Edmonds stacks up against this mystery boot. And ultimately at the end, I'm gonna let you know whether I'm gonna keep this boot or not. So Allen Edmonds handcrafts all their boots in Port Washington, Wisconsin. So this is an American made boot. It has Horween Chrome XL on the top, and which I'm a huge fan of. I have several boots that are made with Horween Chrome XL and it has a day night sole. It also has a 360 degree Goodyear welt. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the specifics there on all the leather quality, sole quality, all that a little bit later. But first up, Let's talk about this style. So the Higgins Mill is a pretty classic service boot. Uh, it does have some interesting features on it, like this stitch that goes up here. That's pretty cool. And then it's got some leather piping around the shaft, top of the shaft, and down the laces as well. One thing I really thought was cool about the Higgins Mill that I have not seen on any other boot is actually with the tongue, I gotta take off the laces there, but the tongue is actually made with a suede. Let's get that in focus. So the tongue's actually made with a suede. I think that's a really cool feature. That suede actually helps a lot with the overall comfort level of the boot. So it's not just for show, but it is a really cool style element. I gotta say, the Higgins Mill is a really beautiful looking boot. Has the brass hardware on there, three, eyelet, uh, three speed hooks, five eyelets. Um, again, yeah, Horwing Chrome Excel. This is the brown version. And this is a pretty slim boot. So it's not super bulbous. It's not like the Red Wing Blacksmith. It's not like the Wolverine Thousand Mile. Uh, this is closer to, I would say, the Thursday President, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit thicker, and definitely the sole is more uh, sturdy than than on like a Thursday President. But it's a pretty classic plain toe service boot, not nearly as bulbous as the Red Wing Blacksmith or the Wolverine Thousand Mile. So I think guys who have a more like traditional style could definitely pull this boot off, and guys who wear slim jeans uh, could pull this off as well. If you wear skinny jeans or anything like that. I think it's a, it's, it's a little bit too big in the end step right here, uh, or excuse me, around the, the ball of your foot. It's a little bit too wide for that. Uh, I'd go with a much more trendy and probably cheaper boot if that was the case. But yeah, if you have, uh, if you dress like this, you'll be able to pull one of these off for sure. Did that just sound douchey? I have, I have no idea. You be the judge. Let me know if that was douchey down in the comments. As for the leather quality, this is Horween Chrome XL leather. As you can see, it has a beautiful natural shine to it. Horween Chrome XL, if you don't already know, is an aniline leather. It is packed with oils and waxes. It is super rugged. It is very resistant to the weather. It's pretty resistant to scratches. It's really easy if it does get kind of scratched or scuffed up, it's really easy to buff those scratches out and to return back to this nice, nice shiny state. So it's not like a super formal look, you know, it's not like patent leather, not super shiny, but it can get a decent amount of shine on there and make this look like a, you know, you could go like a dress boot with this. This isn't really the style of a dress boot, but Horwin Chrome Excel, it's one of my favorite leathers. I have probably five boots now with Horwin Chrome Excel and I love all of them. The leather is two millimeters thick in the upper and then it also has this really soft, and it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to show, but it has this really soft lining in there that's also a millimeter. So you're getting three millimeters of leather between your foot, between the elements. Uh, so that is a decent thickness, but it's not so thick that you're you know, feeling like swallowed in these boots. Uh, it's definitely pretty supple. Um, nice amount of breathability, uh, three millimeters is good enough that nothing's gonna puncture that leather. Looking at the sole quality, this has a day-night rubber studded sole. And day-night soles, they do a really good job of balancing hardness, which adds a lot of durability and grip. So the, usually the softer a rubber sole is, the more grip it has, but also the quicker it wears down. Makes sense, you're hitting your heel on the ground and it'll wear out. But Day Knight does a really good uh, job of balancing that. I think they have more durability than other rubber studded soles that I've tried in the past. Um, on that side, they have a little bit less grip, but not so much that I think it's ever like, a, it's not like a big deal breaker. I, I'm never afraid to walk outside if the concrete's wet with a Day Knight sole because it has a decent amount of grip but the main thing is that it has a lot of durability, which I love. Probably the thing I love most about the sole is the top lift right here. So as you can see, 
This has a one centimeter top lift. That is the heel cap there. Uh, that basically means that I can wear this for years before it ever wears in or even close to that leather. The main thing is you do remove this as it gets close to that leather because you never want to go into the leather stacked heel. That becomes really expensive to redo. But as long as you just uh, remove the top lift, a cobbler can slap a new one on, 30 bucks, you're at the door, you're good to go. So Alan Edmonds says that the Higgins Mill has a bench welt. Basically, this is just a 360 degree Goodyear welt. They call it a bench welt. Uh, they're kind of differentiating between all their different Goodyear welts. Um, and the bench welt is the most traditional. The insole is a three millimeter piece of vegetable tan leather, so that is thick. Um, and then it has some cork filler in there, has a cork midsole, and then it goes straight to the outsole. So it's pretty interesting uh, with that amount of thickness, you know, this is the most traditional form of Goodyear welt, and they call it a bench welt. It really is the traditional version of a Goodyear welt. Uh, and it is, like many people think, it's not so comfortable on the first wear, but if you've ever owned a good pair of Goodyear welted boots or shoes, you know within a couple weeks your foot sinks into that and it becomes super comfortable. One interesting thing is that in that cork midsole, there's actually a wooden shank in there. I don't own any other boots with a wooden shank. That is unusual, uh, but you can walk through a metal detector and that'd be able to be fine, I guess. That's a cool little bonus. But uh, yeah, wooden shank in there. I don't think it makes much difference between wood, steel, any of those materials. Um, I don't think your wooden shank is gonna break or anything like that. It'd be pretty hard to break that. I don't know what you would have to do to break a wooden shank in there, but just something to note. Fun fact. For fit and sizing, I ordered these a half size smaller than I would normally for my sneakers. So same size for a Red Wing, Wolverine, Thursday. Uh, I got the same. I got usually 10 and a half in sneakers. I got a size 10 in the Allen Edmonds. One thing I really like about Allen Edmonds is that they offer their Higgins Mill boot in a huge variety of widths. So you can go B or narrow, D regular, E wide or triple E extra wide. So that really gives a lot of room where you can kind of figure out yeah, how, how your boots should fit and how your feet are and really get the perfect size boots for yourself. Um, you know, for me, I'm a 10D, it's pretty pretty standard. You pretty much find that anywhere. The most, you know, D widths have the widest variety in terms of, you know, seven to 15, I think is their, their range. You might have a little trouble if you're like a B or a triple E, but uh, then that's, that makes sense. But yeah, I just like that they have a huge variety of widths to build on. As for the break-in period, like I said, I have not worn these outside yet. I've only worn them around the house a little bit. I'm still wondering whether or not I should keep them or whether I should return them. Uh, so let's actually just dive into that now, why I'm thinking about returning them. And that's because there's another boot out there that I really, really like. It is a decent amount cheaper, and that is the Grant Stone Diesel. Now at the time of filming, the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill is $445, where the Grant Stone Diesel is $360. They are both made with Horween Chrome Excel leather. So this is basically the same leather. This is the Crimson Chrome Excel and this is the Brown Chrome Excel. So there's a little bit of color difference that you can see. But essentially, these are really, really similar boots. They're both plain toe, which is really cool. But one thing that I appreciate about Grant Stone is that they do have triple stitching along the upper here. Uh, this heel counter right here is double stitched. Of course, you get the plain toe. Whereas on the Allen Edmonds, you're just getting a single stitch along the upper, you have this decorative stitch, and then the heel is also single stitched. So the stitching is a little bit, you know, there's a little difference there. Uh, I like the hardware on the Grant Stone Diesel. I think it's, again, a kind of like an antique brass, but it looks really cool. Uh, you're getting the same, a little bit more leather thickness from the Grant Stone Diesel. It's about 3.5 millimeters, including the lining and the upper. So the leather is a little bit more thick. Also in the sole, you have a leather insole leather midsole, a little bit of cork filler in there, steel shank, and then you also get a rubber studded outsole. The welt on the Grand Stone Diesel is a split Norwegian welt, so it has a little bit more weather resistance than your standard Goodyear welt. And ultimately, just comparing the two, the fact, I think the Grand Stone Diesel is a better boot overall, and the fact that it's about $80 less expensive is a pretty big deal. There's one big caveat, and one reason why I would get the Allen Edmonds over the Grand Stone Diesel, that's because the Allen Edmonds is made in the United States. And if that is really important to you, um, then, you know, don't get the Grand Stone. This is made in China. Uh, the construction is fabulous. It's one of my favorite boots. Uh, and I think the construction overall is better than the Allen Edmonds. But if buying American is really important to you, then 
the Allen Edmonds is the way to go, and this is a fantastic boot. Here's my final verdict on the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill. I really like this boot. I've worn it around, it's comfortable, it checks all the boxes, it's got amazing leather, it has a fantastic construction and sole. Uh, it looks really good. I love, you have Chrome Excel, just this beautiful, th it's a great looking boot and I really like it. And I think it's worth the price. I think 445 bucks for this boot is fair. But I think I'm gonna return it. And the reason is because I have the Grant Stone Diesel. It is a very similar style, it is a very similar shape. It has Horween Chrome Excel leather, but with the addition of the slightly thicker leather, the Norwegian split welt, the steel shank, and the extra stitching on the diesel. For me, it makes so much more sense to just hang on to the diesel and return the Allen Edmonds. So while I do think this is a fantastic boot and I think the price is fair, especially for something made in the United States, uh, outstanding quality, but overall for me, I'm sticking with the Grant Stone Diesel. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see my Grant Stone review, you can see that video pop up right there. Again, thank you for joining me, and until next time, put your best boot forward.